We first met Seattle Mariners general manager Jerry Depoto and broadcaster Dave Sims in early September when they toured Fred Hutch. Both are cancer survivors. Jerry was treated for thyroid cancer in the 90s, and Dave underwent prostate cancer surgery last January. They recently shared their stories with each other before a Mariners game at Safeco Field. When was it that you found out that, hey man, I got, I got cancer? I was 25 years old. I went to spring training. I was a player, and I went to spring training, and, and I had a lump on my neck, and I'd gained quite a bit of weight through that off season. And, and they thought I just got lazy and wasn't really working. <laughs> That's right, right? Yeah. I slack it again, huh? That's what happens when in baseball <laughs> right. situations. But you know, the, the team doc, they put me through a physical, and and uh, and they found the the lump on my neck, and they thought initially it might be a goiter. Uh, and they said the alternative is that it could be a tumor. And you know, I was kind of shocked. I was 25, otherwise healthy, had a wife, a young child, and another wow, one. Already married at 25. Uh, yeah, well, we were, we were well <laughs> into it by then. So, yeah, it was stunning. And I didn't, really fi- I didn't find out I actually had cancer until I'd already had the surgery. I had had my thyroid and the, the no tumor way. removed. And they had gone through what they called at the time a berry picking sure. and found that the cancer had spread to my nodes. And that's when I was determined that I needed to go through all the different radiation therapies and stuff. How long did that last? Oh, boy. Three times over the course of the next two years. But I've been healthy ever since. Mine, it was right after last season, and we were applying for some insurance. Take some blood. and I go out, play golf. We go back to New York, the whole thing. And then right before Thanksgiving, the number comes in. My PSA number came in. It was elevated. And I got really mad at myself and my doctor because in the previous December, the number was up from like up to about a two or three. Hey, call me back in six months. I get involved in the baseball season, I don't forget. And he didn't call me. So now here we are in November and I have a very elevated PSA and, and, and we called one doctor, couldn't get a response. So my wife said, call, call my OBGYN, he knows everybody. That's the place to go. I have- and sure enough, I went in and got the initial exam, and he said, that doesn't necessarily mean you're in trouble, but let's get the MRI. So about, I'm supposed to hear on a Friday. Now we go through the weekend, agony, right? Nothing, sitting in the gym, and I'm, I'm pumping away on a bike. Phone rings. I see Dr. Sher, and I went, what do we got, Doc? He says, I think you may want to come in. I said, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Let me shower, and I'll be right up. And he says, yeah, you, we found it. We're going to do a biopsy, a CAT scan, make sure it didn't spread. We went through all of that, and, uh, and then we had the operation. They said, Ann, I'll get you back to spring training on time. Said, yes. <laughs> I did not have the same yeah, right. pleasure. <laughs> you know, although I did, I was back throwing you know, shortly after the surgery, and I went through some long needle biopsies, and Ew. they weren't able to determine you know, whether it was cancerous or not. But after I had the surgery, I wound up back in, in spring training because they didn't know how long it would take yeah. me to recover from this. And I was actually sitting in a folding chair going through the, the, the throwing operation, throwing to a catcher who was about 40 feet away right. just to keep my shoulder joint loose so that I would be able to, to bounce back as quickly wow. as possible, what was which the, happened. Uh, the radiation and whatnot, what was that like? Uh, I remember it being really hot, you know, the yeah. top of my head, the bottom of my feet being hot, you know, locked in a, in a hospital room for three days, 72 hours. Oh, and, so were you, you allowed know, to have visitors and whatnot? I mean, nope. My daughter at the time was two years old, uh, roughly two years old, and I and, uh, wasn't allowed to hold her. She couldn't sit on my lap within a week of these treatments. And, and uh, had Ooh. to go through it, you know, once, went through it again in six months. And then about a year later, had to go through it uh, again until they got all the, the cancerous tissue. And, and um, you know, I was fortunate, the way I look at it wow. now really lucky that I was an athlete because otherwise at 25, yeah, right? who's going to go in and check it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're invincible at 25. I mean, come on. You know, yeah. you or you're just invincible being around the, you right. know, the, the professional sports venue. Yeah. Like you, that, yeah, some, I've been doing this for 40-some years now. You're so, yeah, unbreakable in mine. The doctor said, my, my cancer was so aggressive. He said, radiation is not an issue. Chemo's not. I'm taking a whole thing out. Da Vinci, uh, the robotic... Uh, Sheen and he got in there and I, 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 I didn't, I, I saw it from a distance, but I always envisioned, it felt like Clark Gable and Run Silent, Run Deep, you know, look up Periscope, <laughs> doing that whole thing. And, and uh, he's, I remember waking up in recovery, he said, I got it all, didn't get any tissue, and then, you know, we'll tell you, we'll go through your protocol for as we move forward. So no, radio, no radiation, no chemo for me. And, you know, I walked around with a catheter for a week, that was a lot of laughs, har, har, har. Yeah. But, uh, and then once that was over, I, you know, I, just build the strength back up and you know get ready to come out here 
the, the wonders of medicine, it, it's unbelievable what they can do today as opposed to, to, I know this was, you know, for me, this was 1994, March 1994. Right. And so many advances have been made oh, since then. Uh, I, I had staples in my neck uh, that, that uh, they were roughly Herman Munster the staples running across the, the expanse of my neck. And, and uh, now I, I see people have the same, the, the same surgery and, or the same procedure. And they're up and moving in a couple of days. Yeah. It, it, looks like, it looks like nothing. And people that, you know, that we met when we were at Fred Hutch and the people that I, I dealt with in New York Presbyterian Cornell Wild, I mean, their dedication and their, ex their expertise is phenomenal and, and they attack their problems like we attack ours. And so, I mean, as, as one professional to another, it's like, man, that, that's really cool. It's really cool. I went into it with absolute trust. I, I, it, it's a, I, I was informed of what was going on and I absolutely trusted the people who were taking care of me and it proved the smart choice. It was a, it was a time, my wife calls it the black hole. Yeah, I like that. to just shut it out, but. I appreciate now having gone through it because I think it shaped my character. I hope uh, you made up for lost time with hugs with your daughter. There's, oh, we're still working. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you.